it's January 1st. Happy New Year to everyone. Connor and I are out here for an afternoon hunt. We've got a little bit of a nasty winter storm rolling through right now. It's dropping snow and right now it's actually dropping a bunch of ice where we're at. But we decided to come after the Big Ten tonight. I've talked about it before but this deer's so hard to hunt and uh, we're kind of at the point of the season we're going to pull out all the stops. We're in this little homemade blind right now and I don't expect to actually get a shot at him from here, but I'm hoping to at least lay eyes on him. And I brought the ghillie suit with me to where I, if we do see him out in the prairie, I can potentially make a move on him while Connor film from here. It's a little bit wishful thinking, but uh, we really don't have much, many other options with this deer. You know, the way this sets up, there's great food, there's more food than you could ask for with it being sorghum corn but the way the food plot's set up is there's all this cover around them and it's you know a little bit higher than head height on the deer so the deer can enter these plots at any any point 360 de degrees around these fields and most of the time you can't even see them unless we're elevated like we are tonight that's part of the reason we got up in this little homemade blind but to try to get close to them is nearly impossible. So I'm just trying to think of what we can do uh, to give ourselves a chance. It did bring a little feeding doe decoy so that if he happens to come through this waterway, he could see it and maybe get curious enough to come check it out. But I don't expect that. I'm, I'm hoping my goal is just to lay eyes on tonight and maybe see which direction he's coming from and set up somewhere um, a different night. But who knows, maybe we'll get lucky see him and be able to make a move on him. Um, deer moving a little bit, we've seen a few already. Uh, still early in the afternoon. We'll see how the rest of the night goes. I think it's supposed to start actually snowing pretty heavy at, at some point. So um, that may damper the movement a little bit, but at least we're out here.
It's getting dark now. I can still see him in the middle of all those other deer. He did a big circle. He had to have been really close to Connor. I cannot believe that. I saw him cross that waterway that we were sitting in that blind. That's unbelievable. Well, we're back at the truck now and uh, Connor just showed me that footage and it makes me want to throw up. That's unbelievable. Uh, I guess when a deer has your number, he has your number. Uh, he walked within 30 yards of Connor in the blind and I was obviously out in the on the ground in the corn. A while those deer decided to leave the corn and walk down that tree line is I have no idea. Um, I didn't spook them. Connor said they just walked out of the corn nice and relaxed and walked right on by him. And I actually, right when I was getting to the corn, one of the first rows I looked down, I could see him all the way at the end. I could just see his rack. He was feeding. And uh, probably right when I started closing the distance, probably when I got within 100 yards of where that spot was, where I last saw him, I couldn't see any deer. And I looked over towards the tree line and I could see him. I could see him bringing up the rear of probably, you know, however many does were in there. And I just kind of watched them. I kind of worked my way back trying to race against them. And honestly, that was probably one of the most physically challenging non-Western hunts I've been on. We have snow and then a big thick layer of ice and snow on top. And every step you fall through, you fall through, you fall through. And I was just telling Connor, my legs are just done. They're jello right now trying to, I was just trying to beat him to the other end. And I couldn't really stop because I was racing against uh, daylight. It was getting dark and I was trying to beat him to the other end and it's unbelievable. <laughs> There's no reason for those deer to walk by that blind. And I said at the beginning, I don't expect to ever get a shot at, at him from there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> it's crazy. The amount of encounters and close calls I've had with that deer and something like that to happen. And I know watching this is probably pretty obvious and, and I understand there's a there's easier ways that I could kill this deer um, you know I could set up in the corn or mow it down or I could use a muzzle loader right now but you know for me I've said it before I'll keep saying it, it's about the chase and the chase for this deer especially has been second to none it's been a lot of fun super super challenging and I would hate for it to end any other way than than me getting him uh, the way I want to hunt him so that's uh that's really what it comes down to is really cool to see him. it's the first time I think since maybe the first of November late October that we've seen this deer um, so it's good to see him again we've got nine days left here in Iowa and I'm, I'll be bouncing back and forth between this property and another property based on wind direction and the conditions to hunt certain deer so I don't know if we'll we'll see this deer get on him again or not. Um, it's a heartbreaking encounter tonight for sure, but like I said, it's it's all part of the chase and the journey, and that's what makes me go back in the woods every day. So uh, good to see him. Tough to know that he walked by where I was sitting half hour earlier, um, but we'll keep at it.